Hey everyone and welcome to another Let's Create Game Mechanics in the Unreal Engine. With the recent release of Half-Life Alex and the fact that I am completely unable to find or get hold of a VR headset from anywhere, I decided why not spend some time recreating some of the gravity mechanics from some of the Half-Life games. So I've done just that. I've gone back and I've created the gravity gun from Half-Life 2 and I've also tried doing a non-VR version of the gravity glove from the new Half-Life Alex. The steps that I needed to recreate this were to first create and implement the basic system of a gravity gun, then to adapt this and use a similar system for the gravity glove. I needed to implement some simple weapon switching so that you could use both and change these in and out at runtime, and then add the polish and the finishing touches to the visuals and some of the game mechanics. To begin, as always, I've started with an empty project and some of the first things I brought into this project were the gun and the hand meshes as I knew that they'd be useful to have available when setting up the first person player class. For the assets I've downloaded a gravity gun and a low poly hand mesh from Sketchfab. I've taken both of these into Blender to make some adjustments to correct the scale, the rotation and added a little bit of extra detail to get some nice glowy orange bits. With those imported into the project I created and set up the materials and the models ready for use in the player class, and I then imported the first person template content into the project to gain access to the basic first person locomotion system and some of the basic input control schemes that I would need. I've also cleaned out the player blueprint class of things that were unnecessary and then deleted everything else from the first person template in an attempt to keep the project somewhat tidy. The final thing to prepare the project was to add the gravity gun and the hand into the player blueprint. And for this I've attached a camera boom to the player for use later in the polish stages. And I've attached the gun and the hand meshes to the camera. And by default I've set the hand mesh to be hidden in game and this will be fleshed out a little bit more in the weapon switching logic. So for the gravity grab functionality I started by borrowing a little bit from the Zelda Breath of the Wild Magnesis Let's Create that I created a few months ago. In that project I found that it was really useful to have the physics handle component which worked perfectly for grabbing an object and having it follow the player so I've added one of those to the player class as well as a couple of empty scene components. I have one of the scene components for the grav gun and one for the gloves which will be the final target location when an object has been grabbed and I then implemented some of the basic grab and drop logic for the gravity gun directly into the player class event graph to try and refine the physics handle variables to replicate the kind of stiff gravity hold in the Half-Life games. At this point I realised that the gravity gloves probably wouldn't be suited to using the physics handle as they wouldn't have any lag or delay when the object is held and I also decided that whilst I could have all of the functionality in just the player class and toggle between the gravity tools here. It would be a lot better to separate them into their own classes to try and keep a focus in this series on making the projects reusable and hopefully good learning tools for better programming skills when you're looking at the projects. So I replaced the tools in the player class with the scene components to hold the new classes. I then created a tool base class to account for the use of interfaces and any functionality that can be shared between them. I then created the two new tool classes and after some setup and reworking some of the function calls I now have the exact same functionality but it's handled in a separate grav gun and grav glove blueprint class. Definitely worthwhile. In all seriousness though, although things like this can take a little bit extra dev time, it does help to keep a project manageable and more readable. And if we just take a quick look over the code in progress at the moment, in the player class, we have a spawn grab tools function on the event begin play to create the tools and pass in the references. Then on the left and right mouse clicks, the player simply passes a message to a tool and it doesn't need to know anything about the functionality beyond the message it's sending. So that's been separated quite nicely into the new classes. On top of this, in the grav tool base, the interface is implemented and two functions are called but not used to make them ready for the child classes to override. And then finally, in the child class, on left mouse click, we check if there's a valid current object being held. If that's true, then we launch it. If false, then we try to grab a new one. And on the right mouse click, we attempt to drop an object if holding one. And just from this, you can see with a quick overview of the initial changes, the blueprint classes now have a lot fewer nodes clustered together. We can reuse the logic between the classes 
And just by reading the order in which the interface functions are called, we get an idea of what's happening based purely on the function names. So to finish the Gravgun implementation, I've added the launch function, which simply releases the physics handle component and launches the object in the camera forward vector multiplied by a force variable. With the basics of the grav gun working, for now I've moved over to the grav glove functionality, and this one is a little bit harder to implement as it's a non-VR take on something heavily relying on VR functionality. The main things I could see as being important to transfer into this project though were the wrist flick to grab the object and having it smoothly interpolate to the hand. And I'd actually come across an interview from some of the Alex developers, and in that they mentioned that the object is constantly correcting course after the wrist flick is made, to ensure it always reaches the player hand even if they start turning away, so this gave me a good place to start. For the gravity glove I decided not to add a throw functionality and have just the grab and drop instead, as throwing the object is something that would only really get the full benefit of using the VR controllers in this example. So in the glove class, when you click the left mouse button, it's checking to see if the physics object is found. If it is, then we grab that object, otherwise we can reset the current object reference. And the steps of grabbing an object are to first animate the wrist flick and at the same time begin moving the object towards the hand. For the object movement I've used a timeline to interpolate the location of the object and I'd also notice that the objects have a slight arc when travelling to the player in Alex. So I've broken down a vector graph in the animation timeline to add a similar arc. With those two steps implemented we have a simple but pretty pleasing wrist flick and grabbing of a distant object. And then for the tool swap, up to this point I'd been manually selecting which tool to call the interface functions on to test the gravity implementations. To complete the full feature set though I needed to add the tool switching logic and this was really easy to work into the system as I'd accounted for this in the previous steps when implementing the grav tool interface. So to begin I just needed to call the switch tool interface function on the grav glove after spawning them in the player class and this will automatically toggle the gravity glove to be the inactive tool. And then below on the left and right mouse click button events I simply call the interface functions on both of the tools and then they will decide based on whether they're active or not which tool specific function will be called. Similarly on the mouse wheel event swap tool. Both tools have the call switch tool interface function being called in the base class and this function will again toggle the current active state so the inactive tool becomes active and the active tool becomes inactive. Behind the scenes here whenever the tool is switched it also calls the drop function to ensure that if an object was being held then it will be dropped and the reference will be cleared as well. With all of that done you can now swap between the tools during runtime to test the different functionalities. For the final steps, I just needed to add some polish to the visuals and a little bit to the mechanics this time. So first, I imported the industrial asset pack from the Unreal Marketplace. Similar to how I finished up the Super Hot Let's Create, the difference being here that this time the industrial and slightly grungy look to the assets actually fit the Half-Life aesthetics perfectly with their default materials. On top of this, I've also added some basic effects in the post-process pass to emphasize some of the emissive materials and the darkness in the level. Inside of the Gravity Tool base class, I've implemented some really simple logic to toggle an emissive strength property that I've added to the industrial asset material. And this will increase when they're targeted if they're found to be simulating physics. This was a small thing I've taken from Half-Life Alex, as it adds a nice hint that something can be grabbed. And I've only enabled this on certain assets in the level, which I'm allowing to simulate physics, as the base material provided in the industrial pack is really complex. And each time I needed to expose the emissive property, even on material instances, it would take a really long time to recompile the shaders. But that's something that you can take a look at if you wanted to flesh that out in the project I'll provide to download in the description. Finally, I returned to the spring arm component that I mentioned right at the beginning of the video and I enabled the camera lag option and tweaked the lag speeds just so that we don't have a completely static mesh, which makes it look slightly animated in a fairly dynamic way. With those changes made, we have the final results, which look like this, which for a non-VR take on Half-Life Alex, especially, I think has turned out really well. And who doesn't love the gravity gun from Half-Life 2? As always, I'll be uploading the full project files, all of the code and everything, and I'll provide a link for that in the description below, so be sure to check back for that if it isn't available just yet. 
And of course, if you enjoy the videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that really helps. Consider subscribing to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. If you do, make sure you hit the notification bell and select to be given all notification updates to make sure you actually get those. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.